After popular demand, I'm happy to announce the release of Easy Rain as your go-to tool for adding highly realistic rain to any level. I created Easy Rain with artists like you in mind, making it a breeze to art direct light drizzles or torrential downpours in minutes. Included are two material functions, one that adds puddles to your entire world, even landscapes, conveniently controlled through the Easy Rain blueprint. And the second one lets you add animated droplets and leaks to any model of your choice. Easy Rain is designed for both games and cinematics usage in mind, and performs well even on lower end GPUs. You can find Easy Rain on Fab, which is Epic's brand new marketplace with seamless integration in Unreal Engine 5. You'll find the link right down below. So let's get right into it. Let me show you why Easy Rain should be a part of your toolbox, how to use it, and what you can do with it. With Easy Rain, you have full control over the shape and size of the raindrops, the wind has gust variation, you can fine tune the appearance of the splashes, and have the ability to add curtains of fine sweeping rain. If you've used Easy Snow before, you'll know exactly how Easy Rain works as the two are based on the same design philosophy. When you open up Unreal and add Easy Rain to your project, you're going to find two demo levels in the level folder. I recommend using these levels to troubleshoot any issues you may have. The showcase demo goes through most of the important settings. I'm not going to go through every single one of these settings because they're mostly self-explanatory with the handy tooltip right here if you mouse over the settings. There are a ton of helpful settings to help you nail the result you want, so I encourage you to check those out and experiment. That said, I want to go through the general functionality and some neat bells and whistles that will really amp up the visual quality of your rain. To start using Easy Rain, simply find the blueprint in your content browser and drop it right into your level. And here are three important things I do want to cover before we move on. First, there's two separate ways of spawning the rain here. Either with the default localized mode that is controlled by the spawn radius, or like Easy Snow, there's a camera centric mode, which ensures rain always spawns around the camera. The choice is yours as to which one you want to use, and you can use multiple blueprints in the same level. Next, there are two settings that control the spawn rate of the rain and the splashes separately. You're going to find primary spawn rate and rain amount. Primary spawn rate controls both the rain and the splashes. Rain amount controls the amount of rain only. So think of rain amount as a multiplier of sorts. For max performance, it is better to keep the primary spawn rate lower, as this uses CPU particles to calculate positions and collisions. The rain itself is GPU based, so a lot better for performance. If you want to reduce the amount of splashes, you can also do that in the splashes tab here to limit the amount. You can get very different results if you experiment with really low primary spawn rate and increasing rain amount, so go ahead and play around with that. You'll notice that if I move the rain indoors, or anything that has a ceiling overhead, the rain will stop spawning, which is usually the desired outcome. But if for whatever reason you want the rain to spawn here, and it isn't, you can reduce the shelter height limit value here, the rain will start showing up again. Next, we're going to go through a few tricks to really bring your rain to the next level. Five settings, to be exact. We've got rain backlighting, ambient color, rain alpha, rain glimmer, and lastly, rain curtains. Rain backlighting will add shimmering pings and help the rain really glow around lights and lit surfaces, mimicking how we see rain in real life. A before and after comparison here should give you a clear indication of what this does. I absolutely encourage the use of this, especially in nighttime scenes. That is how I got the pinging glints on the raindrops in this shot here. Rain Glimmer adds a glinting effect to the rain that can add a lot to nighttime scenes as well. This works really well when combined with backlighting. Ambient Color samples the actual color of the screen and applies that to the raindrops. This can help increase visibility in some scenes, but use this with caution, as it can make the rain look a little bit more see-through, so to speak, as it samples whatever is behind it. When exaggerated, it can start looking really odd and wrong. Rain Alpha controls the general opacity of the rain. Higher values will really help it pop and stand out. Lastly, the Curtains feature can add a lot of depth to your level by simulating the wispy sheets of rain you get during heavy and windy rainfall. There's a lot you can control here, including the general strength, opacity, the scale of it, and the curtains are split up into three layers. The base layer, 
mid, and detail. Each one of these can be individually configured to get the results you want. Just be aware, using too high a spawn rate for these can severely impact performance due to alpha overdraw, if that is something you're concerned about. For best performance, I recommend using a lower curtain spawn rate and a stronger opacity or strength. For best visual quality, I recommend a higher curtain spawn rate and a lower opacity as a result. Included with Easy Rain are two material functions. The first is a world puddle material you can add to any surface, including landscapes, and that is controlled by the Easy Rain blueprint. The other adds droplets and leaks to all of your models. Let's begin with the water droplets. Since most people are probably using Megascans, I will open up the Megascans master material. So drag and drop the material function here, and at the end of the chain, you want to connect the pin to the MA or material attributes, and connect the MA pin right here. If your master material does not use the material attributes approach, that's okay. You have the other pin you can plug into here and you can simply add a break material attributes node and connect these to your material as needed. Then you can create a material instance of that master material and you'll have a new easy rain tab showing up right here where you can control a variety of droplet and leak settings. One thing I noticed with the introduction of fab and its respective new Megascans master material that you get from Fab, you'll see if I try to add the material function the same way I just showed you, you're not going to be able to, it's not going to let you. What you need to do is duplicate the material function in question and then move it over to the Fab content folder right here. When that is done, then you can add that new material function to the Fab Megascans material, just like I showed you earlier. This only applies to fab related master materials. The exact same approach is done for adding the puddles material function to your materials. Just add it to your landscape material or your other desired surface material and you're good to go. In order to control the puddles on your landscape, you can simply select your easy rain blueprint and under world material settings, take this checkbox to take control of those settings. In the material instance, you also have the ability to add a multiplier in the event that a specific model in your scene doesn't look quite right. You can tweak it on a per instance basis. You can also choose to override the blueprint entirely if you so desire. If you decide to set some of the settings in the blueprint and then you realize you wanna go back to default, you didn't really like them, you can simply untick the checkbox here and in the default tab, there is a reset puddle material settings, which will revert everything to default values. It's worth noting that the material functions here have full displacement and nanite tessellation support, and the puddles will depend on a height map for accurate blending. If you don't have a height map, that's okay. There's a global mask here that will place the puddles on your level for you. And you can control the tiling of that mask the way you like it. One last little thing to be aware of, if you want to keyframe some of the world material settings here, one thing you need to do is set the system tick rate here in the default tab. It is set to zero by default for performance reasons. So if you wanna animate anything, you need to set this to whatever your desired frame rate is. When it comes to offline rendering for cinematics with the movie Render Queue, I want to offer a few tips to help you get better results. Movie Render Queue has two sampling types. We've got spatial and temporal samples. For the most part, if there is any movement in your shots, you probably wanna use temporal samples because things will motion blur in the best possible way. However, we've added motion scaling to our rain here by default, right? That simulates motion blur the way that our eyes perceive rainfall, which means that if you render this out with temporal samples, you're essentially going to get double motion blur resulting in these really long, ghosty, stringy raindrops. In this situation, what you need to do is reduce the motion scaling so that your raindrops only become a short blob. This is going to look weird and all sorts of wrong in your viewport, but trust the process, this will help. Here's the before and after comparison of the two. The winner is clear. Next up is the frames per second setting under the advanced tab of the raindrop settings. This is the speed at which the animated raindrop texture sequence plays at. I recommend having a high enough number so that you get a lot of variation during the motion blur sequence. That way, the texture will shift with every second sample and helps break up the motion blur repetition and adding substantial detail. This isn't an exact science and just go with whatever feels right to you. Different values will have slightly different looks. 
So feel free to try out whatever works for you. Now let's talk about some of the drawbacks here. Easy Rain is by no means the perfect rain solution. There are lots of caveats to be aware of, most of which are engine limitations, but I do want to be completely transparent with you in regard to some of the issues I have faced. The first of which is depth of field and translucency. Translucent materials in Unreal are always a bit of a hassle to deal with because of how they work with a depth buffer. You'll see in its current state, rain will not receive depth of field at all. But if I go into the raindrop material and change the translucency setting to after DOF or even before DOF, at least then it will receive depth of field when rendering cinematic shots. However, if you change it, you're going to get a lot of inconsistencies where sometimes it will look good and sometimes it won't. You can get this kind of popping effect based on what angle the camera is looking at, or even how the raindrops will receive whatever depth the background has. Notice here how the rain has very inconsistent depth. You might especially notice weirdness with the depth on the splashes sometimes. You'll see how they inherit the depth of whatever is behind them, like in this example. The splashes should be nice and sharp in the foreground because they're in focus, but they're not. It's super annoying. And overall, translucency has a ton of issues. So I opted for the approach that works best for most use cases. And in this case, I opted for sheer consistency. And to be clear, this hasn't been a huge noticeable problem for me when rendering, as you can see from all of the shots I've shown in this video so far. Now, if you've noticed that you load Easy Rain into your level and nothing shows up, there is likely a simple reason for it. And that's because you don't have mesh distance fields loaded in your project. This is a requirement for the Niagara system in regards to how collisions work. Enable this and Easy Rain will show up again. If you absolutely cannot have mesh distance field enabled in your project, you can open up the Niagara system and simply untick the collision checkboxes here, compile, and it should work again. But really, you should have mesh distance field in your project because Lumen also needs them. So keep that in mind. And that covers what you need to know about Easy Rain. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you have suggestions for Easy Rain, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. There's a lot of things I wanna fix and improve here. So keep an eye out for free updates in the future. I'll be sure to post news and updates about all of my tools, Easy Fog, Easy Mapper, Easy Snow, and Easy Rain on Twitter and Instagram. And as always folks, happy rendering.